Good evening, everybody, and welcome to All Book Club. Um, as you can see, we are not at our usual spot in our in front of our computers and our Zoom. Um, we are trying something different this time around, um, <laughs> whether we like it or not. <laughs> it's kind of some of us are being forced into this, but it's okay. I appreciate it. So um, we are back, and we are talking about our picks for the month. And I'll let Britain go first. <laughs> okay, so. I loved Promise Boys. Mm. Gotta tell you, really good. Hornbook reviewed it and said in their review, it's a riveting murder mystery wrapped in social commentary. And I think that's pretty much spot on. Right on. Yeah. So, Urban Promise is a prep school in DC run uh, by the founder and principal, uh, Ken Moore. And our book begins and. Uh, Ken Moore is shot at school. Mm. We've got three suspects immediately, Trey, JB, and Ramon. These three gentlemen had had recent run-ins with Moore and uh, may or may not have threatened him to his face in front of other people, things like that. They all happened to be at detention and unsupervised when the shot rang out. So... Um, Moore uh, had sort of taken his tough love a little too far, and it was pretty draconian. Mm -hmm. They had to walk in a straight line. They all had to stand up at the same time when the teacher raised one finger. They raised two fingers. They push in the chair. They raised three fingers. They can walk. All sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> but Promise was getting results. Or was it? It looked mm -hmm. like it was getting results. But as our three suspects start investigating things, mm -hmm. and they didn't really know each other before, but they start uh, overlapping in their investigation and coming together sort of through four circumstances. They start finding there's some things uh, happening, some things they kind of knew. Guys who didn't look like they were going to make it to college got expelled for one reason or another, mm -hmm. um, which helps their numbers. There's the Promise Fund and the money there is supposed to be going to boys to pay for, I believe, both the high school and the college, and yet nobody wow. knows anyone who's gotten any money, and hmm. et cetera. So I think what was so good about this is the, the book is written from the three boys' point of view, but then there's news clips, emails, there's teachers, Friends of the boys, everybody gets these little short vignettes, little mm -hmm. chapters, and you get these points of view. There's somebody who recurs three or four times who's simply called nobody. Mm -hmm. So nobody, in other words, a character we are not allowed to know who it is, mm -hmm. is giving us information, and all these people are revealing the picture together. Even if they have like a two-page chapter, mm -hmm. the characters really felt real to me. I felt like Brooks did an excellent job fleshing these characters out even if they were secondary or tertiary characters i mean it really brings to light the kind of times we're living in right everything yeah. is not <laughs> everybody knows your business no, and yeah. <laughs> nothing yeah. is uh personal anymore yeah um, um i i found it very compelling it's one of those books where when i wasn't reading i was wanting to be reading mm -hmm. and i <laughs> like, can I try and look at this while I'm at the meeting, sort of? <laughs> um, it, it, I had heard it compared to One of Us is Lying, and I definitely see that. Mm -hmm. It, I think, is as good as that. Mm -hmm. I think there's some social commentary in there as well, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. that kind of helps raise it a bit above. Um, I, I don't know if it's quite like we had talked about uh, for the Prince Award. Right. This is one of the ones that uh, was being reviewed by the Mock Prince, and I don't know oh. if it is quite that kind of level, okay. but it's also not. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just say, oh, no, it's a, you know, a thriller, but not well, well done. I think it's both. I mean, so. it's like uh, The Weight of Blood. Like yes. I personally yeah. Very thought, much like yeah. that one. I just thought it had a lot of, yeah. I guess, um, promise to right. it <laughs> <laughs> nice <Yeah>. nicely done <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you um so, but yeah, yeah yeah i get i get what you mean like yeah. there's definitely something of value coming right. from what the author is doing with the yeah. book um definitely mm -hmm. something to keep in your collection mm -hmm. if you're a librarian so. i think there was a message to it but i also think it's just a great read mm -hmm. i don't expect to have problems yeah. giving this to kids and having the kids talk 
to their friends about it and everything else. I think it's a good one. Great. Definitely. Awesome. So I also, you know me, I like light and fluffy. <laughs> so I read This Time It's Real, mm-hmm. which is um, Anne Liang, who did... Uh, if You Could See the Sun? That one. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. The Invisible Girl? Uh, yeah. The Invisible Girl. <laughs> That's all I could read. <laughs> um, so this is, it follows many uh, romantic tropes that we've seen. Um, Eliza Lynn... Her family moves all the time. She's lived in like six countries, and she's kind of created boundaries around herself so that she doesn't get hurt anymore. She uh, lives to write, and when she's assigned a uh, personal statement, she decides, why stick to the truth? Why not just write something fun? Mm -hmm. So she writes a great um, uh, essay about her relationship with her boyfriend, Mm -hmm. her non-existent boyfriend. Uh. It goes viral. It gets uh, picked up by a literary magazine that wants to offer her a chance to uh, do a weekly blog post on this non-existent boyfriend and their relationship. So, So, you know, we have our fake dating set up. (laughs) Kaz Song, am I saying? Yes, Kaz Song is a gorgeous classmate who happens to be a TV star as well, who's had some uh, public relations issues and might need a rehab of his image. So Eliza convinces Kaz, and the two of them, of course, then need to go through with the whole fake dating. I see. So I thought that it was a lot of fun. I thought it was well written. I found them very sympathetic, both of them. Um, and uh, once again, I found myself wanting to read it or thinking about it when I wasn't reading it. Mm-hmm. I often like to read multiple books at once, but with these guys, I was like, nope, if I have time to read, that's the one I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. you picked two very different genres there. We're two so, different. <laughs> um, that, that separates a lot of yeah. the plot, I think. Yeah. Um. But <laughs> both of them, two thumbs up. Awesome. Highly recommend. Awesome. Thanks, Britt. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'll go. Um, so I read, oh, I know I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but <laughs> it, it was, it's been on my to read list and it's honestly one of those books that I always hear about and I'm just like, oh, do I want to spend my time reading it or do I, do I, does, do I want it to live up to the hype, I guess? Mm. Cause it's a lot of hype. That's so a lot of hype. the invisible life of Addie LaRue, e. Schwab. I have never read a book no by V. Schwab. No, how does Kaylee let you get away with I that don't, for so long? Uh, yeah, no, she's <laughs> yeah, she's just yeah, she was upset. Uh, <laughs> so, um, give you guys a little backstory. So it's it follows Addie, uh, Addie Larue, and she uh, was from the 17th century. Well, actually, 18th century. Um, so she basically female living in in a world where she's just expected to be married and be a wife and do all sorts of womanly things does not want that obviously because who wants that when the whole world um is your oyster so she makes a bargain uh with the a god of the dark or something like that and basically he curses her he gives her the life of uh, she's basically immortal um but the curse is um anybody that she meets or runs into uh, can't remember her like she, like they walk out of the room who are you what are you doing in here <laughs> kind of kind of that kind of thing so uh, <laughs> without giving too much of this story away you it goes back and forth throughout her life so that's like 300 years in the making um and she basically stumbles upon a young man named henry in like 2014 and for some reason he can remember her Um. and you kind of dive into that once that plot hits um then it gets good this was a slow burn in my opinion, I thought it was kind of, it dragged a little bit. There was a lot of, like, just her walking, <laughs> walking and trying yes. to, like, survive. Um, and, and I, like, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. actually put it down. You in did? In that drag. <laughs> you did, right? Because it, it is. It. Yeah. It was ver- it's a very slow burn. But once Henry got into the picture and um, the character, the God character, Luke, kind of gets in there as well as like a love triangle, it, it, the writing gets substantially in, more interesting. Um, I, guess, I guess I have a lot of problems with it because like not much happens in the story itself. It's just about her life and how she wants to kind of 
leave her mark, and unfortunately she can't because nobody can freaking remember her. <laughs> um, so with that being said, she kind of implants herself through, like, art. Like, she'll, you know, hook up with an artist, and they'll draw her seven freckles or <laughs> put her in the background of, like, a famous artwork. Like, she's just kind of the woman in the in the background that nobody can ever remember. But with that being said, um, it's it does live up to the hype. I think that the writing is good. I think it could have been better. Um, I don't know whether she wanted it to be straight narrative or prose, but I don't know. It was a little problematic for me at some point. Uh, again, like I said, slow burn, very, very, like, the plot didn't pick up until, like, halfway through. Um, but the ending was surprisingly, I thought, well done. I could have done with more diverse characters mm. and I also felt like Henry Henry <laughs> when you find out what this guy did you're just like what uh, were you thinking <laughs> life is not Rosa can barely contain like, herself over like there She's life angry. is not that horrible that you had to make a deal with like the devil and yeah. it's just so like hello like you want to shake these characters and like you are basically immortal. What, and what do you have to show for it? In like 300 years, you've done nothing. You've lived through like wars and uh, you know, genocides, things like that, but nothing. But again, if you need something kind of there for February, <laughs> well, March now, March, since we're posting yeah. in March, but um, I mean, again, it does, I, th I think there's a lot to be said that it does live up to the hype that is the book talk world, um, <laughs> but I personally, I, I wanted more for the characters. I think um, they could have been fleshed out just a little bit more, and maybe the plot kind of do a little bit more editing, but mm -hmm. overall, I think I, I, I recommend it. Um, it is an adult no novel with, uh, I think, young adult appeal. So do you think the slow drag <laughs> could be to create the feeling of what Addie's Oh, yeah, through? like walking. I mean, <laughs> Addie's life is just a slow drag, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so maybe that. But again, know, like. the you're try She's trying to get you to feel what Addie was I feeling. I guess, I guess. But the whole point of, of it is she didn't want to be tied down. Now that the whole world is her oyster, what, what did she really have to show for it in the 300 years? Um, but again, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I feel like she didn't learn anything. No. Like in 300 years, like she could have utilized her curse for something good. Like she could have been a spy for like mm -hmm. a war spy because right. nobody will remember her. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and like, I feel like her personality was basically her seven freckles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, she was the same person that she was first chapter of the book till the very end yeah. is huh. the same there was really no growth in the character um yeah. that's what i mean like I, I wanted the characters to be a bit more flushed out and again like with henry he was just so what was this guy thinking <laughs> that's all i have to say he was not thinking at all and you you feel badly because obviously he went he was going through depression there's a lot of anxiety you can even tell but still, like, life is not that bad. Do not make deals. <laughs> Long story short, do not make deals with the devil. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good message. All right. I turned it over to you, Rosa. <laughs> okay, so I've been in a very bad slump oh, <laughs> lately. Yeah. Um, it's just been duds a lot. And then um, I, I'm kind of burned out in YA. But I found, like, two books that kind of, like, pulled me out of that. Um, so the first one is an ARC of um, Divine Rivals by uh, Rebecca Ross. And I think that is her best work so far. If you're a Rebecca Ross fan, um, definitely like pre-order this because it is basically a story about heart. And like um, it's fantasy, but um, very closely inspired by uh, World War One. So there's a land, um, and it's ruled by the gods, and there's a neighboring uh, nation that is ravaged by war because the gods are warring. And so the protagonist, Iris, and this is sort of like um, inspired by like, I would say the 30s, 20s, 30s uh, period, so like the fashion and everything. Um, she has to watch her brother enlist and then go off to war, and then she doesn't hear from him for half a year and she's distraught her mother um deteriorates and spirals and turns to alcoholism 
And so she has to be the one to support them. Um, with her job as like um, an obituary writer in a newspaper. and Tough job. Yeah. <laughs> Especially during a war. Yeah. And she's like, she's always dreading the day she's going to see her brother's name. Oh, so she's racked with anxiety. She has a lot of problems at home. She's, they're struggling fi- uh, financially. And then um, to top that off, she wants to uh, move up from like her obituary job and write about meaningful things, uh, especially uh, wants to cover the war. And, um, but she can't do that because she has a rival who is also vying for um, a promotion like she is. And his name is Roman. And he comes from a very wealthy family, and she believes that he basically, like, got this job because uh, nepotism. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're both, like, sort of butting heads over it. But um, over the course of, like, their uh, stint, like, at the the newspaper, um, they kind of form a friendship, but they both have a secret. (laughs) They cannot, like, tell each other. Um... Iris has taken to writing letters on her typewriter and putting them in the her closet to her brother. Yeah. Just sort of like like pouring out everything she's been feeling. And then she gets replies. What? Like Whoa. Her letters disappear. <laughs> she gets a reply from like the closet. No. She doesn't know who it is. <laughs> oh man, you pick the creepiest yeah. book sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but then, this isn't a spoiler because you find out right away. Yeah. It's Roman okay. who's writing back Obvious. to her. He's falling in love with her. Oh, and um, he's very reluctant to tell her because at first it was just sort of like, oh, I just want to write back to you. Like, say, oh, you know, it'll be all right. But they start pouring their hearts out to each other. And they have a friendship outside um, the office and <laughs> inside the office. <laughs> But then something happens, and it sends Iris to the front. Oh. And this is the when, plot like, thickens. everything <laughs> happens. It is very devastating, but also, like, just compelling to, like, read, like, all about um, how the war is, like, affecting, like, everybody, not just, like, the people at the front, the people who are, like, at home waiting for their loved ones, like, all the shortages, all, like, the, basically, like, this entire anxiety that the nation has. And Iris wants to do something about that because she feels like there are things that are being hidden about the war that the public is not supposed to know, but she wants to expose that. So, yeah, um, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, It's, uh, every word is just pure emotion and and i'm really mad because there's an ending that's just gonna <laughs> it's gonna ruin you it's yeah ruin. yeah sometimes books be like that yeah. I, <laughs> that's how they hook you yeah no so the gods being involved is what's making it the fantasy <laughs> yeah yeah right. they're the, the ones causing the years back oh, oh like right three, right right four years Love ago. The, oh with the pink cover mm-hmm. and oh the, yes the, with the, the greek guys yeah where you've got the gods oh, and then their yeah. love is love war uh, no Something like that. Yeah, the that. Julie Berry book? Yes. yes. Julie yes. Berry. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Yes. Um, nice, Rosa. We'll yeah. put the cover up. We yeah. can't remember right now. <laughs> I, do you think it was it similar? It's similar. Do you have I periods say. where you're with the gods and their discussions? Or? No, only until a certain point in the book. And gotcha. then you're just like, these gods are in like terrible. Yeah, okay. yeah. gods. Yeah. Gods that, are that, that, yeah. generally cruel. <laughs> yeah, that uh, is a, a common theme yeah. in Greek and Roman <laughs> mythology for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And definitely. I love that we're like writing that now, like mm-hmm. instead of sort of like, oh yeah, so this like myth is like very romantic and like sanitized now. No, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> the gods are very cruel. <laughs> oh my gosh. And they enjoy it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Wow. Well, yeah. um, I think that's a wrap for yeah. our first session. So thank you, yeah. ladies, for joining. Um, again, we are at the All Book Club. Um, we are going to be posting this uh, the 1st of March. And Do we then, give Charles a shout-out? Yes, uh, and shout thanks out. to our man in the background, <laughs> Charles Gallo. <laughs> um, so we'll be back um, with another recording uh, Wednesday, April 6th. So thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully um, we'll get a few more people listening to us uh, through our podcast. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>